What? VGA graphics and Sound Blaster on an Amstrad PPC 640? How is that even possible? Hi, and welcome to Retro Eric. So, how is it even possible to get the Sound Blaster and VGA graphics on an Amstrad PPC? So before I answer how, let's uh, just uh, see what we have done. I have uh, connected a XT IDE card, a VGA card and a Sound Blaster card. And as you can see and here, it all works fine. This is the card that makes it all possible. It's uh, created uh, by Enid. And uh, here we can see his web page where he shows us uh, and tells us about the process getting to this finished product. You can uh, buy the PCB only or the fully assembled card on his uh, Tindy web page. So let's talk about the ISA expansion card. It is connected to the two D sub connectors on the back of the Amstrad. These two ports are basically an extension of the ISA bus. The PPC manual clearly states that the power pins are inputs. And it says this means the power is to be supplied to rather than drawn from these parts. This means we should not draw power from the PC but rather from the expansion board. How come the board does not have any power inputs? Before we answer that, I should tell you that there are one more expansion board out there for the Amstrad. This one has an ATX connector for the power input. It's made by Retro Theory and you can download the Gerber files on his GitHub. But the question remains, do we need power in? To answer that question, I refer to this YouTube video from Goldfish on games. In this video, Goldfish explains why we don't need external power before he goes on to build the expansion board with an AdLib and an XT IDE card into his Amstrad PPC. Check out that video, it deserves a lot more views. The short answer to the power question is that the Amstrad was designed to have a built-in hard drive. And since this is a long time ago, we are talking mechanical hard drives. The computer is also designed to use two floppy drives and a built-in display. Since we are using neither the internal hard drive, the floppy drives or the built-in screen, we have plenty of power to go on. I'm using a 12 volt power supply that can deliver 2.5 amps. After using this for several hours, it has not been even close to hot. I think it's safe to conclude that we do not need external power on the expansion board. If you disagree or have any thoughts on this, please let me know. Maybe you are wondering how come I'm using a 16-bit VGA and a 16-bit Sound Blaster card. For the VGA card, it's simple. There are jumpers to set it to 8-bit mode. The Sound Blaster, however, don't use 16-bit connectors as long as we don't use the CD-ROM interface. That goes for Sound Blaster 16 cards also. I've tested two Sound Blaster 16. The only issue I had was that the Sound Blaster 16 diagnostic tool crashed. To summarize, this is a neat setup. I like having the ISA cards on display like this. It adds to the retro feeling. Making a 3D printed uh, casing is out of the question. I should also mention my Sound Blaster Pro usually picks up a lot of noise, but not in this machine. I believe that's because the ISA slots are so far away from the rest of the machine. Do you have any comments on that? Before we end this video, let's dwell on Goldfish's ID on having the expansion card inside the computer. What if the expansion board was made just a little bit smaller and maybe if it was redesigned to fit inside the machine? So 
Here is my challenge to a need and retro theory. Would it be possible to make an expansion card that fits inside? On that thought, we are ending this video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to come back for more.